Okay, hi everyone. So this week we're gonna go ahead and do one way a no. This is kind of a short mini lesson. Um, so this is kind of just another way we can be looking at variants. Um, so let's just start by kind of talking like, you know, a question is usually asked, you know, why wouldn't we just do a bunch of t-tests here? Because um, ANOVA is kind of, kind of similar to that. Um, the reason being is because we would need a lot of tests for this. Um, and then it would also increase that chance of a type 1 error. Same thing, you know, that next bullet can influence or inflate alpha. It's the same thing, you know, it could really um, increase that because remember alpha is a chance of a type 1 error. Um, and then, you know, overall, we're not going to get information about the independent variable. So kind of, you know, not defeats the purpose, but it doesn't really give us what we need. Um, so that's the main problem there. And just remember, in ANOVA test, we're comparing the means of three or more independent groups. So remember, we were talking a lot about um, two variables or, you know, two proportions, this, this, and that. Um, so this is why we wouldn't do a bunch of t-tests for that. So just a review of what that five-step hypothesis testing procedure is. Same thing for every single one, um, you know, and like I said, the main difference is the first and the second step, you know, because there's always going to be different assumptions and then um, different null and alternative hypotheses, but, uh, and then calculating that test statistic, it'll be a different test statistic depending on the test, but then lastly, determine that p-value, deciding between the null and alternative and stating a real-world conclusion, that's all going to be the same there, so. Just a review, though, of what that is. It's the same five steps for the ANOVA test. So if we go ahead through that, like we've been doing for every other one, we're going to um, check the assumptions. We do have three for an ANOVA test. So first, we have to make sure that each sample is an independent uh, random variable, meaning that um, each sample doesn't affect each other. They are randomly um, chosen um, because that's important because then it will be representative of the population. Um, our second thing that has to be met is the distribution of the response has to follow a normal distribution. So think about it in the way that, you know, you want to make sure that it is normally distributed in order to do this. Remember when we talk about, you know, exact method or normal approximation method, this was um, a condition that would have to be met for that. So, uh, yeah, and then also the population variances have to be equal across the responses to use an ANOVA test. So, and then, but if... Oh, and for number three, to, in order to check that, a lot of people ask, you know, well, how would I know that? Um, so if the largest sample standard deviation divided by the smallest sample standard deviation, so you need both of them, isn't greater than two. So that's basically saying that, um, you know, your, your numerator is not, you know, twice the amount, then um, assume that the population variances are equal and that third, um, that third assumption will be met. And then the two um, hypotheses that you have is your null is going to be that all the means are the same. And your alternative is just not all the means are the same. So pretty self-explanatory there. And our test statistic for ANOVA is actually going to be F. Uh, so that you'll find that in the table and mini tab. You know, we, we had, you know, equations to find T and Z and everything um, in other cases. But uh, for this one, you know, we'll, we'll just find that in um, the table for F. Um, and remember that we'll find that in terms of there being a right tail probability. So we get that p-value from doing a right tailed um, test, you know, and then find the area under the graph for a right tail test um, for an ANOVA test there. And, you know, the definition of our, um, of our F, you know, test statistic, it's just the variation between the groups divided by the variation within the group. So that's kind of how we get the whole picture for an ANOVA test. And then our p-value is going to be in the table from Minitab, like I said, same thing as the um, f value. They're both next to each other, so our p-value is dependent on that f value. Like I said, um, remember our hypothesis testing procedure, you know, our second step to get that test statistic, and then third, we're going to get that p-value based upon that test statistic, which is f for ANOVA. And then same thing, you know, I won't go too far into these. You want to Hopefully you, you know these by now that you'd decide between your null and alternative based upon what your p-value is, so reject or fail to reject the null. And then go ahead and state the real world, world conclusion based upon the original research question. So with, you know, the information that you're talking about, where you're talking about people or cars or whatever the situation was. Okay, and there's also something called postdoc tests. Um, so this is what we do after um, we do an ANOVA test. So let's say you found that, you know, there the groups are, are different. You found something statistically significant in favor of the alternative, and you find that out. So what are you gonna do in this case? Um, you wanna find something specific like which groups are different. You know, you find that they are different, but which ones specifically are. So you have your null and alternative there that I listed are gonna be um, your, so you see null and alternative, excuse me, and then, yeah, so then you have your mean one minus mean two, because that's gonna show you, you know, 
which groups are, are mean one and mean two different. So it's just like another test you're gonna do in order to find the specific um, groups out of that uh, group that are actually gonna be different from one another. So let's try some of these review questions. Um, so we have two sets of sample data. A and B are given uh, without doing any calculations, indicate which set of sample data a or B is um, there's likely to be a stronger evidence of a difference in the two population means. So go ahead, check this one out, and then we will review it together. All right, so, um, oops, where my, I don't know what just happened there. Ah. Okay, okay, here we are. I don't know what that happened there. Okay, so um, our answer here is A. So we're trying to see, you know, where is there likely to be stronger evidence for a difference? As you can see in A, there's no overlap between the two distributions. Um, you know, we don't really see anything in common for them. While in data set B, you have this entire area here where there's something in common. So we're gonna say that A is more likely to have something, um, a difference there. Okay, so for the second one, we have 90 people with high cholesterol randomly divided into three groups of 30 and a different treatment program for decreasing cholesterol is assigned to each group. The response variable is the change in cholesterol level after two months of treatment. An analysis of variance, so ANOVA will be used to compare the three treatments. What null hypothesis is tested by the ANOVA test? So go ahead, if you're watching this back, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can answer this one on your own. Um, and so here we're looking for a null hypothesis, which means, remember, no change. Um, so our answer here is going to be D because um, we're talking about the population means. So that's why C and um, A aren't correct because we don't talk about samples in um, our null and alternative hypotheses. And then um, and remember, for our, all, for our null hypotheses, we're talking about the means being equal, not the variances. This is variances. Remember, that's something that we talk about in the um, in our assumptions, so that's not the answer. This is for a null hypothesis. So population means are equal for the three treatments. That's something that we would um, discuss there. And then lastly, given the mini tab express output above at the 0.05 alpha level, which pairs of summer sports are significantly different? So A, B, and C there. Um, uh, go ahead and read this over and look at the mini tab output here to the right and see what you think the answer is. And so if we do look at this, our answer is going to be um, C, volleyball and swimming. Um, because if you look in the different uh, summer sports, you know, swimming and volleyball ball don't share a group letter while running and volleyball do, and then swimming and running, they do. So the only pair that doesn't share a group letter is going to be swimming and volleyball. Swimming only has A, volleyball only has B. Um, and then also, so that's, you know, one reason that we can tell that they're different. And then another reason is that, you know, our p-value is going to be um, smaller than, in the pairwise comparison, it's going to be smaller than 0.05. So in that case, um, we know obviously that we're going to find it to be um, statistically significant. There's going to be a difference there. So um, that is how we find that out there. So good job. So yeah, you can obviously go watch these back. That's not the correct date, um, but <laughs> our next review will be on April 5th, actually. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know. If not, you guys are great to go for tonight. Thanks for stopping by.